All right, last thing I want to walk through is an application of how we can find the average value of a function. You might remember back in uh, Calculus 2, we did come up with a formula for the average value of a function of one variable. It's just an integral formula. It basically says that the average value is 1 over the length of the interval times the function itself. Essentially what you're doing is if you have a function defined over an interval a, b, you know, that has a particular shape like this f of x right here would be, you're finding if the area underneath that curve right there is the integral from a to b, I want to find a height, I'm going to call it f of a, v, e, so that the area underneath the rectangle that I just drew is the same as the area underneath the curve that I just drew. So what height is it so that this match sorry that this rectangle matches the area under that first curve? Okay? You can almost think of it as taking this block of cheese and melting it or taking a block of ice and melting it. How high would it be when you melt it down? And so we could do that with surfaces too. Imagine this giant iceberg or whatever it is. If you wanted to melt it down and form a rectangular prism, what's the average height of that function over that rectangle? And the formula is 1 over the area of the rectangle, that's what this a sub r is here, times the double integral f of xy dA. So here's the whole volume, and you multiply that by 1 over the area. I shouldn't say area. Yep, 1 over the area. I did, I did mean area, not volume. So this is the whole volume divided by the area of the rectangle. You do that, you get the average value of a function. So again, one way to think of it is if you have this surface and you smashed it down, what would be the average height? What would it look like if you melted down a block of ice to this size that had a curvy top to it or maybe just pressed it down into the shape of a cube? How much would there be height-wise? But another way to think of it is like this example here, which I'm just going to talk us through. I'm not actually going to do any calculations um, by hand, but I want to show you an example of how we might take a contour map like this and use it to find what the average is of this function across this rectangle. So you've got a full rectangle here in figure 18. This represents the amount of snowfall that fell on the state of Colorado on December 20th and 21st in 2006. So it's a good example for uh, applications here because the shape of Colorado is essentially a rectangle. It's 388 miles west to east. So this direction is 388 miles. And this distance over here is 276 miles. And this contour map shows you that like in this region inside here, we would say 32 inches of snow fell on those days. In this region over here, we might see that along those lines, we have 12, okay? Here's 16, here's 20, all the way up to 42 up here, okay? And so I want to find what was the average snowfall across the entire state. Now, if I had a formula for this function, I might be able to do it by integrating it. But since I don't, I'm going to do an approximation method. All right, so let's place the origin at the southwest corner of the state. And then we're going to let x go from 0 to 388, since that's the number of miles across this way. And y goes from 0 to 276, which is vertical. And then let f of xy, the function, be the snowfall located at x miles to the east and y miles to the north. We let R be the rectangle that represents Colorado, and then the average snowfall for the state, based on the formula I gave you on the previous page, is F of AVE, F sub AVE, equals the 1 over the area of the rectangle, so the surface area of rectangle R, which is the area of Colorado, is the double in, times the double integral R of FFXY DA. Now, I know that A of R is going to be 380 by, 388 by 276 because that's the area of that rectangle. Sorry, let me jump ahead. So to approximate this, we're going to use the midpoint rule 
and do four divisions in the y direction and four divisions in the x direction. So we get 16 subrectangles of equal size, and we're going to do the midpoint rule, so we'll pick a point in the middle. So I just used a ruler to divide it equally in four equal subintervals this way and equally y axis four this way. Draw a grid then on Colorado, and then choose the midpoint. Again, using a ruler to measure at each individual point, the very center of each of those rectangles. And since those fall near lines, I'm going to use the value of that line, that is that contour line. For example, this point I'm going to say has a function value of 24. For this one, I might approximate with 12. I know it's somewhere between 12 and 16. Okay, But then I'm going to, again, add up the function value times the area of the rectangle. Right? Remember back when we learned the midpoint rule, it was the function value at that point times the area of the rectangle, and then you added that up for all the rectangles. Now the area of each subrectangle is going to be 1 of 388 times 276. They're all equal size. There's 16 of them, so we have the 1 of 388 times 276. I plug that in my calculator at 6,693 square miles for each of my 16 subrectangles. So my actual um, double integral could be approximated by adding up the 16 subrectangles evaluated each function times delta A. So delta A is going to be the 6,693. And so I just went through at each midpoint approximated what the amount of snowfall was at that point and added them all up and got 207. So like this zero right here is what I get on the previous slide. I'm going to back up uh, right here. There's zero snowfall right there. This one was uh, close to 16. So 15. And then I just kept going for all 16 of them. Add that all up, I got 207 times the delta A, which we know is 6,693. That's my double integral, is this numerator right here. So the average value is going to be that double integral, the top, divided by the area of Colorado. The average snowfall was 12.9 inches. On December 20th through 21st, 2006, Colorado received an average of approximately 13 inches of snow. And that's how we could do an average value when you have a contour map with all the different values. So, I mean, to go from that contour map to an average, that's kind of a cool little trick that you're able to do now using double integrals. And that's the end of section 14.1. Sorry, 15.1.